Mystic Spear Hand is totally a balance class inside Dragon's Dogma 2! It's all good, it's all good, or everything's fine. Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day. And today we're going to be going over just how broken Mystic Spear Hand is inside of Dragon's Dogma 2. The Spear Hand has got to be without a doubt one of the funnest classes to play in Dragon's Dogma. I know a lot of the other classes do feel really good, but there's some that pull ahead and the Spear Hand is definitely one of them. So what makes the Mystic Spear Hand so good? Well, to start off, it has some insane damage. It can pretty much nuke just about any big monster if they're staggered on the ground. You can use the Master skill and they just get deleted. We are very defensive and we can make our party very defensive with a bubble, which is just gonna allow us to face tank everything, which is lovely. The moves are pretty diverse as well. There's a lot of different kind of play styles you can adapt to and most importantly it's a bucket load of fun it is just so much fun playing mystic spear hand when you get the hang of it now first things first we're gonna go over the core skills because there's actually a little bit to unpack here there's a bit to unpack it took me a little while to get a hang of the core skills once you get a hang of the core skills mystic spear hand starts feeling extremely strong and also a hell of a lot more fun to play so the core skills that mystic spear hand does have is redounding bolt magic cut and then we also have twin cut and it obviously is a lot of things that are spelt weirdly with mystic spear hand and it just hurts my brain but that is twin cut pose the first thing to mention with uh, twin cut and magic cut is they can both use while running uh you don't get anything different with uh, magic cut but twin cut you kind of do get a little bit more of an aoe that's about it you can jump with both moves uh the jump with magic cut does kind of suspend you in an animation for a long time i wouldn't recommend using it and the jump attack for the twin cut is kind of the same as you using it on the ground so it, it is what it is. Now the first upgrade you can get is Scattering Bolt. Now this took me a while to figure out. You actually have to hold down Redoubting Bolt for a little while. Uh, and then it will upgrade to Forbidding Bolt. Now this is going to paralyze the enemy. It's going to stun them in position. Big monsters, it slows them down uh, by a lot. And obviously the little monsters, they do actually get frozen into place. With Scattering Bolt, when it hits the enemy, you can hit Right Bumper again and it will AOE. It's very nice because then you just freeze all the enemies and you don't have to worry about them hitting you. Just go in and just mow them down. And then you can teleport to the enemy as well. You can also teleport to the enemy with it. This is a really cool move. It's a really good opener because you're freezing the enemy and then you can just unleash uh, whatever weapon skills or whatever and just nuke the target. The coolest thing, and I love that they did this, the coolest thing that you can do with the Forbidding Bolt when you charge it up is as long as you're holding that button, the right bumper button or whatever it is on keyboard and mouse, as long as you're holding that, you can still do all the other moves. It's so cool. You can use your core moves, you can use your weapon skill moves, all while charging up the Forbidding Bolt, and then you can unleash it whenever you want. Uh, AoE enemies, teleport to enemies. It's such a cool mechanic being able to hold it down while using all your other skills. It just makes Mystic Spear Hand feel so rewarding. Uh, when you start mastering all the abilities. Now, Winding Cut uh, has to be arguably one of the most busted moves the Mystic Spear Hand has at its disposal. If you keep rapidly pressing X, you will start doing a spinning animation with Twin Cut. This doesn't use any stamina at all, so you can just use it until the cows come home. When you do eventually get to the end of the animation, which it's a very long animation, you will do an overhead slash. If you stop pressing, rapidly pressing the button, you will follow up with the overhead slash. The only negative to this move is you will get suspended in animation for quite a long time because you're, you're spinning and then you still have to do the overhead slash before you actually finish that entire move. If you use this on an enemy's vitals or when they're knocked down staggered on the ground, it is just going to absolutely obliterate them. All right, moving on over to the weapon skills. I'm not going to be going over every single weapon skill. I'm just going to go over the ones that I think work the best for me and also the ones I think are kind of like the strongest and the most fun to use. Now, again, I'm going to rant. I hate that all of these are spelt so bad. Like, it's like a child wrote this. I'm sorry. Uh, the first one we have is Dragon's Foin, Finn, I don't know how to say that, man. I'm not even going to try, okay? The lunging, piercing attack that you can do at distance. This is a really good opener. You're just going to leap straight to the enemy. You're going to pierce them. It does pretty big stagger damage, I've noticed. You can do this while jumping, and you can follow up the magic cut button while in the air to, like, pole vault down on the enemy. This is a really good move. I'm surprised about how much stagger this actually has. If the troll or enemy is starting to get those wobbles, I notice if you just do it straight at their chest or try and aim at their head, it most of the time will knock them down. It is actually a really cool move. And it's not just used as an offensive, it can be used as defensively as well. You just aim in another direction and you can use it to dodge enemies' attack. 
I don't really like using it this way. You do have the bubble, which we'll talk about in a minute, but either way, you can still use it to kind of dodge, essentially. Not that I use this weapon skill all the time, but Seaching Storm is actually pretty decent. You can use this while you're attacking to help chain more attacks together. Why it doesn't do a lot of damage, it doesn't cost that much stamina to keep spamming it to get those four crystals out to go flying uh, and hit the enemy. The best way to use this is kind of when you're using Winding Cut because it has such a long animation. You can nearly get eight of these things off before you actually finish Winding Cut. So you can kind of stack a bit of damage on that way. But other than that, it does lack behind a lot of the other weapon skills. But it is still a really fun and very high attention because you're, you're always focusing on trying to get those four magic crystals out as much as possible. Next skill I want to talk about, and I, don't, I think this is an absolute no-brainer, and that is the Mirror Shield. The mirror shield is busted. It's so good that the fact that you put this on your whole party and they're gonna basically be invincible for like five to 10 seconds uh, unless they get hit a whole bunch. But even then it can tank like three or four hits depending on the, the enemy's hit, I think. This is gonna make your spear hand very, very tanky. In fact, your whole party for that matter. It will tank every hit. There's not a move that's just gonna break your mirror shield or anything. Like it's still gonna take like two or three hits before it actually does break off or I think like 10 seconds it will just disperse on its own. This is going to help you face tank just about everything. You, as soon as this falls off, put it back on, keep attacking, falls off, put it back on. You're never going to die. Your party's never going to die. It just makes, it does really put the game on easy mode. Now next up, arguably one of my favorite moves to use with Mystic Spear Hand. It might not be everybody else's cup of tea, but it definitely fits my play style coming from like Sekiro, Liza P, all those kind of parrying games. This is kind of a parry move. It, well, it basically is a parry move, actually. And that is Sky Dragon's Feast. I think that's how you say that. So what this is going to do is you're just going to pole vault up in the air and land back down on top of the enemy. If you use this when an enemy is just about to attack you, you will do more damage. That's why I said it's kind of like a, like a parry. This does do big stagger damage as well, especially if you land right on top of the enemy's head. But the best way to use this move is on big monsters, obviously. So say a troll's about to hit you, You'll pole vault up onto his back, and for some weird reason, it lets you stand there for a little bit, at least until they move, and it gives you enough time to just start winding that cut up, and you're just literally hitting them in the back of the head, and it's doing insane amount of damage. It looks really cool, it feels really cool. Just an overall really, really fun move to use, and it feels super rewarding when you use it just before you're about to get hit. Another move that I don't use all the time, but it is a massive, just dopamine move, and that is Unto Heaven. Unto Heaven, it's not very usable. It's mainly fun to just taking out every mob that you see and considering that the mobs that packs are just so dense and they're so repetitive sometimes you just want to use unto heaven and just knock them the fuck out of here this is kind of like a meme move for mystic spear hand you just start spinning your weapon in front of you you suck all the enemies in and then you just hit them off for a home run baby and it is it is kind of weirdly satisfying listening to those screams as they just fly off into the void the long animation kind of makes this a little awkward to use on bosses, but it is just fun to clearing out mob packs very easily. Now for the next weapon skill, I'm going to be talking about the mastery skill, and that is Wild Fury. Now in a minute, I will tell you how to get this. For now, I'm just going to explain how it actually works. Wild Fury is such a friggin' badass move, man. It's so badass, so baller. Uh, you just go slashing through to all the enemies. You get like a shadow clone, you become fucking Naruto now. You have a shadow clone with you, and he's coming around slashing all the enemies, so you're basically getting double the hit. And you hit really hard with Wild Fury. It's insane how much damage this thing can do when you've got a big monster knocked down on the ground, he's staggered. Like if you go up to a Griffin's head and use this thing, he is gone in seconds. It is absurd how much damage you can get out of Wild Fury. To get the most out of it, you do need to burn through all of your stamina, so that is why you want to use it on a big monster that is knocked down to get the most out of it. Wild Fury is still very usable for mobs as well. You don't have to spam it until you run out of stamina. You can use it two or three times, and you still will go launching around the battlefield and just taking enemies out. It's a super OP move. It just deals with mobs very, very easily. The only negative, obviously, is it does burn through your stamina pretty quickly. If you want to get the most out of Wild Fury, if you want to just spam this into your heart's content, I would highly recommend pairing it up with Venor's Hond. I'm, again, I'm probably butchering that. This is a move that's kind of awkward to use on little mobs, but it works perfectly on big monsters. You're just going to sap their life force from them. It does like a little bit of damage, uh, but you're going to get all your stamina back. You're just going to pretty much instantly get it back in like three or four ticks. And then you can just dump Wild Fury until you nearly run out of stam, 
just so you have enough so you can reuse this move to get all your stand back and then you just dump wild fury again and then you just repeat that process and before you know it the, the monster is dead that's not the only synergy this does synergize really well with a lot of other uh, things that mystic spearhand uh, does use but i do feel like this pairs up so well with wild fury and just being able to spam it as much as possible now just quickly for the augments i do have again i haven't got all of them but i do have some now so i'll just go over what i do have what i'm currently running but i do have endurance is going to increase our stamina i mean who doesn't like a bit more stamina in a game where your stamina is just constantly getting drained radiance doesn't really matter this is going to make your bland better this doesn't make you at your class actually perform any better now next up we have lethality which is from the archer this is going to make us do more damage to enemies vital which is huge considering that wild fury is already at strong as it is and same with wild and cut i have constancy which is from the sorcerer this is going to uh, help us stop getting knocked down as much polarity here which is going to increase our strength during the day and our magic at night and then last but not least we have athleticism which is going to reduce our stamina cost when we are dashing now that's pretty much it for all the skills and everything i do want to move on over to some more tips i do want to tell you guys and tip number one is make sure you upgrade your spear weapons at the elven village i don't know if this is the best i'm just I just feel like it might be because it increases your magic damage a lot. It scales way better at the Elven Village and also they decrease the weight of your weapon which is going to be handy in the long run so you can carry more stuff when you're out exploring and then for the armor i would recommend going to the dwarven area i haven't got there yet but i have read that the dwarven armor does give you a lot of knockdown resistant as well as like knockdown on your weapon which is huge for like warrior and fighter and mystic spear and probably as well rogue would be good for that the dwarven armor upgrades will give you knockdown resistance which is obviously going to be very handy since a lot of monsters knock you down and then last but not least how you guys can get the mastery skill for mystic spear hand unfortunately i didn't have it recorded my little noodle didn't process that this was an important quest and i probably should be recording it so i do apologize i'm just gonna have to use the map to explain here so eventually as you progress the story you will find yourself back at melv and you will meet a guy called sigurd he is the mystic spear hand like master guy once you finish up with something at melv he does give you the vocation and then you will meet him again and you kind of got to follow his quest line until you get to the dragon crest tower when you get there you help him there again and then all you need to do is use that scroll that he gives you and bing bada boom you have the mastery skill and it's just that simple and that is basically it for this video guys if i did miss anything please let me know in the comment section below i want to try and provide as much helpful information as possible and i try not to miss anything i freaking hate it when i do but if I did miss anything, please let me know. I am hoping to maybe go through and at least do a guide or like a build uh, for each vocation just so you guys have something to use as reference to maybe help you guys get better at the game or just help you better understand how each vocation works. Appreciate all the love and support as always guys and until next time, stay safe, peace out.